Hello, hello, I am Ben Pick. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Running to Write, where I give questionable writing advice through running metaphors. By mile eight, your leg muscles might be cramping and getting sore. If you haven't adequately prepared prior to the race, then you might be struggling to find a steady stride or already slowing down. If you've made multiple mistakes along the way, you'll likely be wheezing at this point, which is a terrible sign for finishing the marathon altogether. With these many hindrances in place, it becomes so easy to outright stop. Writing is the same way, where you must frequently overcome mental roadblocks to continue. When I shift from writing my own stories to reading for fun, I am struck by how I will never write as proficiently as those critically acclaimed authors. Knowing that I am incapable of instilling such high peaks and low valleys in another reader hurts. On a bad day, those insurmountable odds feel like weights preventing my fingers from typing on the keyboard and telling me that I should be doing anything else that's useful, like household chores. Honestly, the drive to scrub dishes has never been stronger than when I first sit down at my computer and begin to write for the night. Those pressures and interrupting thoughts compound until I can't think what I want to type next. These are my five do's and don'ts for how to fight past writer's block. I am explicitly making this content different than my episode on defeating doubt, though some of the same concepts do apply here. Number one, set aside time to write. Adjust your schedule to have 30 minutes of uninterrupted writing time and aim to write for at least 20 minutes of that. If you're able to write for the full 30, then bravo, give yourself a pat on the back. Just write, simple as that. It's that easy right? Not usually. 30 minutes of uninterrupted time can be extremely difficult to manage when you are in a household filled with people who are generally making a lot of noise. I mean, I swear some of my family members walk around with bricks attached to their feet or something. I'll explicitly ask for 30 minutes of uninterrupted time where I am without distractions. I'll leave my cell phone upstairs on silent, not vibrant, because I can hear that shit through the floor. Close the door, turn off my Wi-Fi, and just write. Number two, write freely, knowing it will change later. In draft one, you're aiming to write as a steady stream of conscious thoughts, even though most of it will be crap. In my experience, a lot of writer's block comes not from a lack of ideas, though I'll get to that next, but from an unwillingness to write anything that doesn't meet my arbitrary standards. Knowing you'll produce something that needs to be rewritten later can hold you back when you allow it to stop you from creating in the now. If past me is any indication, draft two is an unrecognizable book from draft one because I tend to rewrite most of it. That was an extreme case involving me tearing down everything I had written and rebuilding it from the ground up. Most draft twos won't be as drastic. However, early in an author's career, those early drafts will require a lot of revisions. That's to be expected. Number three, do a menial task requiring little brain function. Ages ago, I worked at a blockbuster, which, with all but one exception, no longer exists. Not only did I have a lot of time to think while restocking shelves, but I had the added bonus of being surrounded by such wonderful and terrible movies alike. Seriously, there's a lot of movies which should not have been made. A few years later, I was stuck at a job which required very little thought. That left me free to generate a fountain of ideas as my mind wandered. I spent a lot more of my time than I should have 
writing notes to myself to expand upon later. In fact, I used to create Google Calendar events with my ideas in the description field so that when I got home, I could pick up the current work in progress. I'm about to start outlining my next story and I already have 70 pages of content to parse through. For me, generating the ideas is never the problem. It's generating the right ideas, the great ideas, the turn paging ideas. But that's for another episode. Those 70 pages contain plot elements, conversations, and settings I at one point thought were required for that story. I'll parse through it all and may push back some pieces into a future book or discard them altogether. This generates an overabundance of ideas for me, which I can then tailor and customize and improve upon. One of my weird writing quirks is that I like to leave 10 blank pages before the start of every chapter. I'll fill those out with outline notes and messages to myself or pieces of the chapter that I have cut out and am unsure if I want to add them back in. I'll use those notes so that I never have to force myself to generate ideas on the fly or under pressure. You should also keep pen and paper by your bedside because some of my best ideas I've gotten first thing in the morning when I woke up or late at night as my final thoughts before I go to sleep. And nothing is worse than that feeling of losing a great idea because you didn't want to leave warm blankets. Number four, listen to your body. Writer's block may be your body's way of telling you that something is wrong with your story, be it an unaccounted for plot hole or character motivations that are lacking. If your body is fighting against you to write the next scene, those underlying issues might be the cause. This leads me to the fifth and final do for working through writer's block. Do plan. I've mentioned this before and will continue to do so. I outline my stories to death. The best way I've found to avoid writer's block is to know what comes next. In other words, outline. You probably don't need to outline as much as I do, but that is a personal preference. When there are too many branching paths forward, it can be intimidating to pick just one. Thus, writer's block could really be uncertainty caused by analysis paralysis. Those are my five do's and here are my five don'ts for avoiding writer's block. Warning, doing the opposite of these upcoming steps may place you on a collision course for staring at the computer screen for hours. Also that sentence included double negatives and I'm sorry about that. Number one, don't make excuses. If you don't want to write, then own it. Writing can be stimulating for your mind, a way to process events around you or trauma in your life. But writing can also be a burden. Saying you're going to write tomorrow because you're tired is an easy way to push writing back to tomorrow's tomorrow or after you paint the house or beat another video game. I found it much more beneficial to admit that I didn't want to write today than to list off alternative activities for how I'd rather spend my time. Number two, don't beat yourself up. If you didn't write yesterday, then doubling the amount of time you write today may not be the right solution. Producing double the word count today to make up for a lack of a writing cycle yesterday is difficult and places undo and added pressure during your next writing cycle. Consider the past a wash and focus on your writing goals for today. Missing a week, a month, or more of writing likely means that there was something major going on in your life. And addressing that is much healthier than getting sidetracked by writing stories. I've had several changes in my life and when life went back to normal, I was able to go back to my regular writing schedules. Number three, don't fix grammar as you write. Stopping and starting again throws off all built up momentum. When running, a great way to injure yourself is to go from an all out sprint to a complete stop 
and then back into an all-out sprint. That is what happens when you stop writing to fix the usage of there. Add in a missing object or rework a sentence so that it doesn't end on a preposition. Try to write in a manner that doesn't use passive voice, but you shouldn't be editing as you go. This isn't a free pass to ignore grammar, merely a point to address it later during your self-editing phase. And yes, that is self-editing. Because before anybody else edits your work, you should do a few passes. Number four, don't perform research while writing. For the same reason as grammar edits, aim to not stop writing. If your characters need to science the science thing, put a general note in brackets and come back to it later. Return to this moment after performing research so you don't interrupt your stream of conscious thoughts. Nothing is more intimidating than starting to write or getting back into a writing stride after a big pause. I found it significantly easier to rework and edit my draft one into draft two than when I initially wrote it from scratch. Your work will improve with each iteration, so don't be afraid of what you write first. There you have my five do's and don'ts for overcoming writer's block. I am Ben Pick, and thank you for joining me in another episode of Running to Write. What's the worst excuse you've used not to write? Let me know in the comments if any of you are actively struggling with writer's block or how you plan to avoid it. If you enjoyed this content, then give it a like and feel free to subscribe for the latest videos. Join the Running to Write community on Facebook and Twitter to share your thoughts. See you next time. Until then, keep writing and conquer everything blocking you from doing so.